Hi, Vinyl Community. I'm back with uh, the Francois Hardy reissues on vinyl from Light in the Attic Records. Um, I've had these now for about a week and uh, really been having a great time listening to them. I was able to get my hands on this beautiful poster, which is the, uh, the promo for this archival series. Those are the five albums that uh, we're going to talk about. And um, let me just start with the packaging of the very first record. We'll talk about how everything looks and what's in there physically. And then I'll talk about um, <clears throat> the, the sound recording, the quality of the remasters. And then I'll talk about each record as well. And then at the end, I'll give a little bit of an update to my Francois Hardy collection. So, this is the brand new reissue of the debut album. It's typically known by the title there of the first track. It's just an absolute classic of hers. It's done in an incredibly beautiful gatefold. You know, virtually every detail except for things like this where it's the new record company, you know, almost nothing has changed. It's done in that style. It also comes with an Obi style strip that comes wrapped around it and it tells you the other albums in the series, gives you a brief synopsis of the album and otherwise is kind of a pain in the neck to keep track of after that. Um, but each one comes with a gatefold insert that has bits of interview and a lot of detail about the recording sessions and the songwriting uh, that happens on each record. So each one has that and it's really quite well done in each, each album. So let's look at the vinyl. This is, uh, you know, if you'd never seen one before of this label, you know, you really have to look to see that it's not the original has that a little FDR there by the 33 and a third, and that's the new record company. The grooves of this record are very tight, and you can see there's a lot of uh, dead wax on there. The uh, Let's just look at the original now, because you'll see that there's much less dead wax. So, uh, I'm not even talking about yet how they sound, that's just how they look. Um, so they're both, both the original and the uh, reissue are quite heavy vinyl. It probably says 180 gram, it definitely feels like at least that. As, but as does the original. I also have um, this copy of the original, which is, I think exists because the uh, copyright is, you know, expired. And this really sounds inferior to, to the original and the reissue. So, um, you know, you would definitely favor anything in favor of uh, this one <coughs> in terms of the sound. So, um, let me talk about the sound of the, of the reissues and then we'll go through each album. Uh, which is really going to be cool because uh, it's been great to really pay this much attention to to her individual songs. Um, <clears throat> they uh, managed to get you know a little more presence, a little more volume. Uh, you know her voice is higher in the mix, and you can definitely hear texture, especially in the higher end of her voice. Uh, the instrumentation is just you know a little more clear, a little more distinct. Um, but it's not, you know, compressed or mixed uh, strange. You know, when it's playing loud on the stereo, it really kind of sounds, uh, you know, you almost feel like you're in the sound booth because it just sounds that clear. It sounds like a studio recording, you know, um, but with that quality that her recordings have of just capturing a very natural sounding voice. Um, so <clears throat> that was the, that's the first album. 
you know, if you don't buy anything else or don't check anything out, that's a great place to, to go. You can't, you can't go wrong. This is the second album, and this is <clears throat> more of the same, some of the same, let's call it, you know, na naive uh, um, arrangements. And that's sort of, you know, her description uh, is kind of critical of some of the musicians on the, on the first album. But it's sort of a playful uh, sound that way. And this one really has, is, you know, very similar to the first, a little more assured, a little more varied, but it's not the, the, um, you know, Motown, Phil Spector, Bacharach, stream this is still the uh you know very soft spoken more like the original and has just a very quiet <clears throat> uh feel, you know maybe it's a little bit quieter than the first one um beautiful cover kind of suggests that she's at the beach there and then the uh shots in the studio are great because i think that's you know she did, is not known for being a live performer you know, that's kind of where you see, I think, the album actually being made. Here's the third album, which was retitled Made in Paris on the uh, Four Corners label when it was uh, reissued in the States. More pictures there. This one, uh, that real strong orchestration and the background vocals coming in and that wall of sound uh feel that's coming in here mixed with the you know her her own material and uh really a nice middle uh middle place this is really a sweet spot it's a it's a great album and um definitely great next is a real uh <laughs> breakthrough this is one is known by this title and this is just the one that is sort of groovy. You've got uh, fuzz tone guitar. There's a little bit of fuzz tone on the one before this, but this one is a straight up like 60s, uh, you know, party with uh, just an amazing, amazing feel and, you know, groovy in, in the cheesy and the great sense of the word. You know, some of it is just a little bit over the top, but it's all... Uh, just got an amazing style and that cover kind of gives you the you know evening coming on and uh is just an, this is really a great one this would be uh my you know aside from the debut this would be the one i'd most recommend to get <clears throat> then you know this is almost like the night after that big party because this is so quiet um this is really uh, got very little drums, is just soft, it's beautiful, it's, it has an amazing outro where the song sort of slowly builds into a march, which is just so cool. And, you know, all through these, there are individual songs that'll just blow your mind, you know, where the turntable and the uh, time just seems to stop. So I'll just show you a few updates to the collection here. This is a seven inch single, which has two duets, one with her husband and one with uh, Iggy Pop. And uh, it's a great track. Here's what the... 7 inch looks like. This is the cassette and this is the first cassette I have of hers. This is a great album. It's got both those songs on it. That's really cool. And uh, that song is actually the song that's a duet with her husband. This is the sheet music to it. It's actually a cover of an older song. Um, but this was just really cool. It's a really great song, and there's a, a cool video for that track as well. Um, the last thing I'll show here is this is the sheet music to a song that she did in both French and um, 
French and English. It's called Magic Horse in English. It's a beautiful song. Uh, it's really interesting reading about these songwriters, one of whom is really no foreigner to the, uh, to the top 40. And uh, anyway, it's a beautiful song. These are the lyrics if you care to check it out. But this is a beautiful song in French and English. And, you know, this is different than um, some of the, I think, some of the English material that she didn't like doing earlier. I think this came a little bit later. And one thing is clear, she loved these songwriters. And this is an amazing song. So <clears throat> I'll probably come back on this topic with more female singers and a couple additions to the Francois Hardy collection uh, coming up next. So uh, please comment or subscribe. Be happy to chat with you about uh, those records. Uh, thumbs up.